Hello and good morning everyone. Welcome and thank you for tuning into our webinar today. The title of From Discovery to Commercialization in Cell and Gene Therapy, a case study on non-viral workflow for modifying primary T cells. This webinar is organized by NextGen Scientific in partnership with Lanza. My name is Fatin and I'm from NextGen Scientific and I'll be serving as the moderator for today's event. First of all, I would like to introduce everyone to our speaker today, which is Ms. Tan Yun Wen. Ms. Yun Wen is currently the Senior Sales Manager at Monza Bioscience Singapore, uh, graduated from National University of Singapore in Life Sciences. Yun Wen has 15 years of industrial experience in cell culture, therapeutic media, genome editing, um, transfection, endotoxin, and mycoplasma detection. Uh, she also offers consultation on automated and digitalized GMP manufacturing processes. So in this webinar, Ms. Yun Wen will take us through on how Lonza could offer the solution for cells and gene therapy from the discovery stage to translational and then to clinical trials and finally to commercialization. So without further ado, let's welcome Ms. Yun Wen to give her sharing today. Over to you, Ms. Yun Wen. So there is a huge um, industry um, initiative to reduce the cost of this CAR T treatment. So, but there is also some good news. Like for example, recently China insurance company called Ping An, they started to include insurance coverage for CAR T treatment as well. So insurance company are slowly and slowly include the CAR T or the cell and gene therapy treatment as part of their insurance coverage. So that is a good news for most of the patient. So despite CARTI, uh, despite the COVID pandemic, or uh, probably due, due to the um, COVID situation that happening right now in, well, we have so many cases in Malaysia and um, Malay Malaysia, Singapore, and all across Southeast Asia, it actually get a lot of attention to the investor that healthcare is something that they really need to put a lot of money in so that they are able to develop a lot of treatment available for patients. So in this 2020, we have more than 1,000 active clinical trials being run globally. And even for APEC, right now, there are at least six um, clinical trials already at the late clinical phases. So this... Um, first half of 2020, they already received global financing of more than $10 billion. So our industry are in healthcare are really getting a lot of attention from the financial area, financial sectors to put a lot of effort. And there are a lot of IPO, there are a lot of merge, um, m and uh, happening right now for all the pharmaceutical and biotech company. So based on um, current more than 1,000 active clinical trial, you're able to see that actually close to half is actually an immuno-oncology. So it means right now, most of the treatment are using um, immune cells, hopefully to um, give the patient cell back to the patient body and able to recover and repair their own um, 40 genes. So there are a lot of um, clinical trial in this immuno-oncology area. So in the fast approaching manufacturing challenges, what are the technology to implement for commercial scale? So what are the biggest problem? Why the cost is so expensive? Because in the past, we are reliant on a very antique um, technologies in, is a bit in the normal standard pharmaceutical drug industry, but that is not really um, suitable for cell and gene therapy purposes, especially personalized medicine or autologous treatment. So that is something that they really need to come and improve the challenges and solve the challenges that are being faced in manufacturing and cell and gene therapy. So, when we do a survey to know that what are the near-term technology advancement that um, for all the cell and gene therapy customer, what are they looking for? They look for process automation, they look for cross-process, and they really want to have a lot of robotic inside their platform. So why cell and gene therapy or um, 
Noah, this chemo is so expensive because all this cell and gene therapy treatment are very manual process. That means you need to employ many technicians, you need to have a very big clean room, and then you need to have multiple equipments so that you're able to do this at the highest quality as possible to meet the pharmaceutical um, FDA approved kind of requirement of quality. But all this currently platform currently industry is facing that they don't have some solution so all the company like Lonza has come into it and we are trying to help to solve the challenges being faced in the manufacturing process so cell therapy is the when we say about cell therapy the product is actually the cells so it could be allogenic it can be autologous the cells are collected from either patient themselves or the healthy donor and then grow it externally and put it back to patient that is a standard cell therapy but gene therapy is more toward um we try to gene modify the cells and ex expand the cells and put it back to patient so but right now the terms are being used um interusable because they are either called cell or it can be called gene therapy so we are not all calling cell and gene therapy so one of the key challenges at different stage from discovery to clinical trial and commercialization so in discovery you need to find and um, find a lot of drug candidates and clinical trial you need to make sure that all your components are in GMP and when you do commercialization you need to make sure that you're able to scale out the process so for my experience when I first started in, with Lonza 10 years ago I came across some of the directors that working with um, cell and gene therapy initiative and they was telling me that the, the very challenges that they are fa facing right now is the researchers do not have the mindset of having their um, research projects being translated into a bench um, to the bedside. So that is something that you really need to think through your whole um, research project when you even when you are just first started, when you are doing the discovery and research area. So a typical customer profile in cell and gene therapy is when they are at the research, they are trying to identify a lot of drug candidates, drug targets, and do a lot of validation, develop a lot of assays. But when they are at the preclinical trial, they will need to look for um, testing on animal, testing on um, 3D cultures, and make sure that it's mimic human bodies, getting efficacies, and everything. When you get um, a very solid data, then you are able to apply your... Um, apply to the mission of health and getting uh, your IND file and move into phase one. But during phase, phase one clinical trial, you can only recruit um, healthy healthy volunteer, like 20 to 100, to check that all those medications that you inject back to a patient are not harmful. Only at phase two and phase three, you are able to recruit patients. So phase two, the scale is about 100 to 300 patients. And for phase three, you need about 1,000 to 2,000 patients and sometimes when you're in clinical um, trial phase 3, you need to have different region. So you need to have um, a clinical trial being run in US, Europe and also APEC area. So that gives you um, a big population of your clinical trial patients. Yeah. So this is how the typical process flow, but it's very, very important and critical for the researchers to start defining your own process at the early stage. And you know, you have to understand that for all the raw material that you're using, it's able to translate back into clinical trial and use it in commercial scale and treat human patients. So what Lonza or what um, vendors available for you to choose is the very first time is you have to work with cell culture. Most of the pe people, they can work with cell line and then they will work with primary cells. But primary cells do give more biological relevant data to the researchers so that you mimic what's happening in human body. So that's why primary cell system is something that very important on the discovery to translational part. And research media or the GMP or therapeutic media is very important because you want to culture the cells and you have to give them a lot of nutrients for them to grow and able to expand the cells enough for a for a treatment per se and for transfections or you can use virus is something to genetic modify the cells it could be t cell it could be nk cells and so on so this is for genetic modified the cells 
And for when you're moving into more late um, clinical trial, you need to look for something automated, patient skill manufacturing. And Lonzo, we also have a system called Cocoon. And of course, before you inject back to a patient, you have to make sure that you have endotoxin testing in place, you have mycoplasma testing in place, so that you are able to safely inject back the medication into the patient. So, but the whole manufacturing or so the batch record, it could be tons of paper. So they are initiative in the industry to do paperless. So that's something that Lonza is offering, which is the Moda platform for electronic batch record and also um, digitalize your QC data. So for commercializations, so Lonza, we are uh, one of the world's biggest CMO company. So we doing a lot of manufacturing and development work for our customers. So if you decided to work or you, have, you would like to find a partner, Lonza could be your commercial production partners as well. So now this is the very busy slide, but what we tell you is, um, well, our whole human body, they have hundreds of different cell types. But what is very important for cell and gene therapy customers are usually a blood cell type. So usually the customer come to me and say, uh, you and I, I need to, I already have my research, but now I need to have um, uh, process validation being done. So I cannot just take a normal patient cells because I need to have the speed of it. So can you tell me what you can offer? So customer will tell me that, I will probably need a fresh leukopack. I will need to have fresh cell or fresh PBMC to start my process validation. But because Lonza sourcing our cells from US, so it's usually a quite a long distance to fly from US to Singapore. So in this case, crowd preserve cells probably something better. So we will work with customers that what is suitable for them or do they still need the fresh cells so we are we are working very hard with our customers here in singapore because i have to make sure that the cells the fresh cells that the fresh um whole blood were able to ship from us to singapore within 48 to 72 hours so that's something that i'm working very closely with all the co-change partners to make sure that that's something that we are able to deliver because at the end of the day, you have to make sure that the cells receive is with very, very high viability that customers can continue to work and process with. So that is uh, the story about the blood cells. So customers can look for me and they need a lot of requirement. But we are saying that Lonza, we have the proper letter of consent from our donors. We source our cells ethically and we also have the RRB approval for all our primary cells and blood cells. And of course, if you can access to the Malaysia hospitals with all these criteria, that is also possible. Uh, but Lonza, we already have it as a commercial and many of the situation is customer will require a lot of um, extensive uh, uh, characterization to the cells. So for example, they need the HLA phenotype because they need to have the match donor. So that's something that we are able to offering as an additional um, QC being test on all those um, primary cells. And for the research media and also GNP media, so I always tell my parents what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm actually selling a lot of um, cells and the cells cannot eat bread, right? And they cannot drink Milo. So what they need is really a nutrient that's su sufficient for the cells to survive. So we're actually selling the, the, the cell culture media for the cells to grow. But my customers, when they first started, they always work with Fitable, I see um, animal component and classical media like DMEL, RPMI or MEM, and then they do a very good publication. But once they publish and they think that they want to move forward to the next um, step, which is the more translational work or clinical trial, and then they look for me, you know, how I'm using your media, but now I need, uh, my collaborators say they need an FDA approved media. What do you have and how can I do it? Do I need to revalidate my, my whole process again? So that is very, very important that um, when you're doing research, you have to have in mind that what is the next step. So if you are moving into clinical trial in the first place, most of the people are moving into serum free, animal component free or more synthetic or recombinant proteins. So that is very important when you are thinking about it. So long as we have classical media, we also have primary cells for endothelial cells, carotenoid cells, but what can actually bring into clinical trial are mainly the GMP grade media. So for Lonza, we our branding is called Therapic, Therapic XVO, Therapic MSC GM, or Therapic SF AAV uh, 
calcium free AAV medium. So, what are the difference? So, I will know customers if they are in the research or in clinical trial. For the researchers, they will say, okay, I'll just give me this pricing and I'll go for the cheapest. And that's what I need. But when the customers start talking to me that, um, may, may I know whether you have TSE or BSE statement? Do you have a, any animal component free statement? D do you retain your sample? Uh, do you have it GMP? How do you do your process, uh, manufacturing process to produce the media? How, how is, the, how is the, the, the record of it? So we know that the customer in, are in a more advanced research stage when they ask all those questions. And it is, there is a huge difference between a research grade media, are you all use only and for further manufacturing? It, it is a two different kind of um, quality system because for um, let's say, for example, the raw material being used in RUO is just a normal research grade. But if you want to get the therapeutic media, you need to make sure that even the raw material to produce the media is already a GMP grade material. So also of the, the supplier of the um, active component are already at a much different um, quality standard. So Lonza have two types of labor claim. We label as RUO and which is research use only, and we also label as FFM, or we call it for further manufacturing. So what is the difference? So if you are just looking for RUO label, it is uh, following a ISO 9001 only. That's the quality system we have for all the research use media. But if the customers are working with for further manufacturing or they need a GMP, so we have this something called for further manufacturing or some other company, they can call it GMP grade media. So what is the difference? So Lonza doesn't say this is a GMP grade media because the intention use of this therapeutic media is for customer further manufacturing. So what we are offering is the best quality that we can find in the market produced in a GMP environment using the GMP grade of raw material following all the GMP guidelines like 21 CFR part 820 and ISO 13485. But it is customer responsibility to do their own assessment because Lonza supply media to the customers like to you is for your own manufacturing process. But we are not able to see what you're doing inside the manufacturing, manufacturing facility. So it's customer responsibility to make sure that all those are following all the pro proper um, operation and quality risk control and able to use it for regulating um, regulation falling. So this is um, just a different labeling for Lonza compared to other supplier. So feel free to ask your supplier, what type of documents do you have for this to support my filings of INT? So the, the vendors will be able to advise you further. So produce the media in a CGMP environment is not, doesn't, is, doesn't mean a GMP media. Because the GMP media, as I explained, from retain of sample, doing more quality control, the raw material that being used are already GMP grade. That is the two world of different. Okay, so do ask your your supply on those questions. So therapy media and reagent that Lonza is offering as a GMP tools is is very high product performance. It's a serum free formulation, GMP produced media, and we have multiple media formulation to put the customers. And we also recently launched the serum free AAV media for AAV production. So our branding therapy media itself have been used more than 130 clinical trials globally. So our star products is Therapic X Vivo 15 media because it's one of the rich media and it have a lot of publications and citations using for the primary T cells, NK cells and all those blood cell type. And one very important thing is this is also a critical raw material in commercial FDA approved therapy that um already commercials right now. So if you you would like to test on this sample, do contact NetKitchen to, to ask them more information about this. So how about genetic modification in cell therapy? All this um, car, available CAR T commercial um, uh, treatment right now are mainly viral vector. But if you are looking for something non-viral vector, because um, viral vectors, GMP grade can be very expensive as well. And the delivery lead time for the GMP grade viral vectors 
can be very long because of the global demand of the CGT. And if you need some alternative um, alternative um, gene modification, you may want to consider um, a non-viral base. So when you're thinking about genetic modification, you have to think about the efficiency, the robustness, the versatility, able to scale into a, scale up into a very big cell number, and very uh, you have a good safety for patients, and you have proper documentation and support. So Lonza, we have a technology called nucleofactor technologies. So this nucleofactor technologies is actually using the state of art electroporations, and this is very versatile and very high transfection efficiency that very um, compatible to the viral method. And this technology itself is we have more than 10,000 publications that using this technology to do um, genome editing. So most of the leading labs globally are using this for their gene therapy or for their CRISPR as well. So what are the principles? So most of the um, transfection method or the electroporation method can only bring the DNA into cytoplasm area only. But for nuclear factor technology, because we name it as nucleus factor, so nuclear factor. So the DNA will be able to bring into the nucleus and also the cytoplasm at the same time. It gives you a very high transfection efficiency with low mortality and the DNA is into nucleus directly for faster gene expression. So for the non-dividing cells, this is the fastest way you can bring the DNA directly into nucleus and do the genetic modification to the cells. So, so I need to back up for my for my for, for my statement. So we stain um, the DNA that is being transported to the cells, and we stain the GFP expression, and we stain the nucleus using the P strain, and we merge the pictures, and you are able to see that the DNA is really inside the nucleus and also at the cytoplasm area, and this is very fast. This on primary dermal fibroblast cells is successfully transfected after two hours of transfection. So the efficiency is very, very high. So if you're working with viral vectors, you may take months to develop that, and then you have to think about how you want to infect the viruses into the cells, and the whole process is so much uh, challenging. And while this non-viral method is something very fast, just hit them with erratical pulses within seconds, and then you observe after two hours, and then you already have the um, GFB protein being expressed already. So Lonza Nucleo Factor Technology, we actually have more than 20 years of um, history already. And this year is actually we celebrate our 20 year anniversary. So we started with Nucleo Factor 2B, a very old devices that really used in research. And slowly we move into 4D and now we do more um, throughput for screening purposes like 96 well shutter or high throughput system. But why I, I highlighted this LV and X unit because for cell and gene uh, therapy customers who are mainly working with primary T cells, CD34, dendritic cells, NK cells, so these are the two platforms that customers are using. Usually they will start with the X unit to do the smaller, smaller cell um, number. And while everything is being confirmed, proof of concept, then they move into the large volume, which is the LV unit. So because this is very relevant, you need to have um, a closed system um, that able to meet the GMP requirement. So we came up with the LV unit about two years ago to address the need in the cell and gene therapy market. So everything that you do in smaller scale in X unit, we're able to transfer here. And you also need to have um, enough cell number per treatment to your patient. So 1 billion cells, this is usually the guideline that per one injection, they need to have 1 billion of T cells. So this particular closed system, we're able to scale up up to 1 billion cells. And this system will be able to operate up to 21 CFR part 11. And when there is IQOQ services, and we also have the GMP grade therapy consumables that work on this. So these are the, uh, because we are we are discussing cell and gene therapy today, so this is a site that we, I put it up because we have tested more than 45 different blood cell types. Either they are in primary cells or they are in cell line. So we do have very, very good publications. You can check on our database. You can also Google Scholar to check on Lonza Nucleofactions with your cell type of interest. 
So what normally is happening for, for this particular process is the cells are being collected from patient and either T cells or CD34 cells. The T cell you can work with car chimeric antigen receptors and make into CAR T and for CD34 cells you can use CRISPR zinc finger talon the, the, the scissors to cut off the bad gene and replace with the good genes and then you can modify your CD34 um, C34 cells. So after you do the modification, you do the proper characterization and expand it. So when you receive and um, have enough cell number, then you're able to reinfuse back to patient. So what type of the disease are running in clinical trial right now that using nucleofactor technologies? There are sickle cell disease and thalassemia um, disease, and there are severe combined immunodeficiency, SCID, and also HIV therapy. They're currently using this particular system for, for the um, clinical trial. So they are, sorry for this very busy site, but I just want to tell you that for the this 10,000 publication that we have, we have a lot of generation of CAR T or CAR NK cells. We have this CRISPR um, genome editing on your primary T cell or CD34. So if you're interested, just, just get this particular publication and have a reading and you're, you're understanding that what's really happening in the research world right now that using nucleofaction for their genome editing. So when you're doing genome editing, you also need to think about the GMP again, the same thing like the media. If either you're working with viral vectors or you're using a non-viral method. So you have to consider from four different perspectives. How do you produce uh, the consumable or the viral vector? How do you do testing? What type of documentation is available? And how do you receive the GMP grade of um, consumable or the receive the viral GMP grade of viral vectors. So all these are the things that you need to really consider. Like you have to use the proper manufacturing facilities, you have to have the high quality raw material, and you have to have all the documentations. So for Lonza, we have actually, so this is really, really fresh from Arwen that we just launched this year. So we are now able to offer therapeutic grade of P3 solution for transfection purposes together with the cartridges and reservoir because the whole transfection we are able to take maximum up to 20 mil. So then we have all these consumable already have the therapy um, um, graded and we also pro pro able to provide the re relevant documentation for that. So take a break. But after you do all this, but when you're moving into clinical trial, you may need to consider that there are so many lab equipment in, in, the, in the lab. You have an incubator, you have the safety bio cabinet, you have the have all this shield incubator and water valve and so on. There are a lot of lab equipment involved if you want to produce it. And when you're doing it manually, there are so many human interaction with it that you it continue to give, um, it could have the risk of introduced contamination to the patient sample. So there is a need for the industry to really come up with the automated and patient skill manufacturing platform. So in a typical cell and gene therapy manufacturing process, you collect the sample from, from the patients and then you do the sample preparation, you do the selection, activation, transduction or transfection, expanded formulation, and admit back to a patient. And there are so many things that you need to involve along the way. So usually, you if you if you see some of the cell and gene therapy facility, or probably the facility that you have, all the people have to go out properly, and then you have you have they have to deal with so many different equipment. But the cost is expensive for cell and gene therapy because of the clean room area, because to maintain a GMP environment, and no, because you need to employ a lot of technicians inside the whole processes. So for a typical cell and gene therapy suite, you may need. 24, 24 um, workers that work inside and proper train and so on. So all this added to the cost of it. That's why the, the industry like Lonza, we also have CGT, um, cell and gene therapy facility. So we, we need something that able to help us to automate it and scale up. That's why we came across this, a system called Cocoon. The Cocoon were able to right now take the patient sample loaded to the system and then the whole 
process will automatically run for eight to ten days, depend on your requirement, and then being admit back to patient. So what is inside the cocoon? So the cocoon platform is an automated patient skill um, system. So this is how it looks like. And you need to have a cassette. Okay. If the cocoon platform is the body, so the cassette is the heart. And then you need to have um, the, the, the brain, which is the software, and also the cocoon tree so that you're able to stack it up. Because as I mentioned, a GMP facility to run it, to, to build is very expensive. So the space is very critical. So if you can do it a stackable, like a cocoon tree system, you're able to build a lot of cocoon in one very small area. So that's helped you to reduce those GMP lab space. So this um, slide will give you more in depth in terms of the cocoon platform features. So environment, unit is already consists of 37 degrees Celsius and also 4 degrees Celsius. It means the body part itself is already able to replace a fridge, which is 4 degrees Celsius, and a CO2 incubator, which is 37 degrees Celsius. So this dual zone temperature is able to control within the cocoon unit, and there, there is a real-time monitoring of the DO and the pH to give you feedback. So in terms of the cassette, why? The, the cassette is one cassette, one patient. So that will help you to reduce the chances of cross-contamination. So for this cassette itself, we're able to work with lentiviral, gamma, retro, transduction system, and together the nucleofaction um, non-viral method. And for software, as I mentioned, this is a brain. So it's a very simple touch screen, and you're able to control it. It's very user-friendly and also 21 CFR Part 11 compliant. So this in-depth to give you a, a more in-depth feeling on what is the cassette doing and how the automation being run. So the first thing is the media are keep in a 4 degree Celsius refrigerator at the bottom and it can take up to 8 internal bags. So the media are warming on the higher side, which is the here, before it will being bring up to the proliferation chamber on the top. So the cells can load on the left hand side and then load it and load the cells into the 37 Celsius culture chamber where the cells are reside there and throughout the whole process. But if let's say I want to have a viral vectors introduced on day two and day three, so there's something on the, the pot in front of this that I can put in additional viral vectors when I need it. Or let's say the mRNA is not very stable, I want to add it in later on. So that is something, the port that you're able to do that. But there's also a port for you to withdraw the sampling. Like your, you want to test the media, you want to do the cell count. So this is the port for you to remove the sample and able to do QC testing. So when everything is properly done and after 10 days, now you would like to harvest the cell, you will directly connect to the back and then you're able to take the cells, either you crop preserve it or you, in, you can inject back to patient. So this is how it looked like for the cartridge. So you may ask me that, so at what stage I need to withdraw the sample to do my anatoxin or mycoplasma testing? So it is mandatory under regulations that when you have the sample before you admit back to a patient, it's a mandatory step that you have to do that endotoxin testing. But many of the customers also do an in-process testing because they wanted to catch earlier. If there's anything wrong, they can catch catch um, much earlier. So they can do it before expansions or before they create the master cell bank, um, before they expand the cells or before they create the dosage form. Because many of those sampling points were able to help you to do the trending. So that will help you to... Uh, reduce all the possible risks so that for every production batch, you will have the golden batch. So all the batch will be able to fulfill all your specification. So Lonzo, we are the um, one of the uh, big supplier for the regulatory approved endotoxin testing method. So we have this pyrogen gel called LAL, turbidity metric, comogenic, or we also have the non-hostral non care, which is the recombinant factor CSA. And recently, there's also a new trend, which is using the monocyte um, MAT system. So we provide reagents, we provide consumables, instruments, and also software to do trending. So this is something that really 
needed when you are moving into more advanced clinical trials. So as I mentioned, if you have a very big manufacturing facility, if you have many patient sample to deal with, you need to deal with many, many papers. So for every batch record, it could be thousands of pages. So this gives a lot of uh, um, challenges and stress to the QA team because QA team need to review every single pages. So, but today we are in a digital area, di digital um, digital situation. So we have everything, iPad, iPhone, and so on. So that is also a need that for industrial or for manufacturing to move from paper to a paperless system. So this is why we are offering a system called MODA, which is the mobile data acquisition. So all the data that you are trying to acquire now, now is you're trying to scan the barcode and collect it digitally. So you can also sign the signatures on your with your digital signatures nowadays using this system. And this system definitely is uh, compliant to um, CFR, 21 CFR. So currently, most of the manufacturing process are not linked. So you have your paper scheduling, you have your paper sampling, you have then moved into incubations, and then you do the result entry manually. You might see it six, I might see it five. So there are a lot of things that um, challenging what the manual entry on your QC data. And when you need to analyze every single page, you need to review and approve from the management level, and you need to do reporting and training. All these are really, really paper-based at the moment for most of the company. So when Lonza have our cell and gene manufacturing in Tuas, Singapore, they think that all these people work for a manual process like autologous. It's just too many paperwork and it's too, too taxing to our QA personnel. So that's why they are looking out for a lot of software that will able to help them to solve these challenges in manufacturing side. So the MODA system will able to have it everything digitally. You have all your schedule digitally, they will give you an alert that, oh, today you need to, to do this particular one. And if you continue to do step one, step two, and step three before you can move to step four. So all this have been digitalized. And the best part of the moda is the review and approve site. Let's say I'm a manager. I, I need to look through 1,000 paper to approve that this is okay to do end product release and inject back to patient. But it takes me days to review every single one. But do I need to review something which is be, be within the specification? So this model system will able to um, let you focus on only those which is out of spec and something that doesn't following the procedure. So you can just focusing on all those and see whether would that still help to um, put with, within the specification before you can release. So all this reporting, all this trending report that we came with Moda system, there are more than 40 reports that you can generate digitally. We're able to streamline your whole process and you can do more most of the time to do something more valuable. So the last one, which is our cell engine therapy development manufacturing process. As I mentioned, Lonza is one of the world biggest um, CMO facility. So we do offer services to customers who need allergenic cell therapy, autologous, and also viral vectors. So we have the manufacturing services if you are required for that. So we also help customers with preclinical and early phases, late phases, and up to the commercial path that we are able to offer the manufacturing service for. So I only have 10 minutes, but I'll just do a very quick one, just uh, to focusing on the case study and the white paper that we developed between cocoon and nuclear factors on how we deal with this non-viral workflow for modifying primary uh, T cell. So this is how it looked like on bench. Of course, you can stack it out on a cocoon tree, but for uh, the one that we have in our process development lab is, so this is how it look on the bench. So this is a cocoon which is open, and this is the brain, and this is the nucleofactor LV devices that connected to the cocoon system. So this is the white paper that you're able to easily Google it. If you need it, you can get from next gen as well. So, this particular study, we do a 10-day non-viral process. So we take the 9 times 10 to the power of 8 
rested on French PBMC cells and transfected with the this is our control point speed, which is PMAC GRP vectors using LV vectors for 20 mil maximum volume. So what happened on the first day or day zero is we tore the crop reserve cells and we also take it from fresh local pack and isolate the PBMC because the study is trying to compare between the fresh PBMC and also a crop PBMC and let's see what are the differences between um, the, the crop reserve one and also the fresh one. So on day zero, we try to do the transfection first and then we, after transfection, we seed it back to cocoon system. So we do the 80% media change at the transact bit and also at the IL2 after four hours of transfections. And then we continue to close the system and let it run, let it shake and let it rotate. rotate. And all this have been um, automated in terms of the media change and also do this. Um, we can stop it to withdraw some sample for cell counting. And then for day four to day 10 is the same of middle exchange also uh, remove the sampling for cell count. And on day 10, we harvest the cells. Some of them we go for full cytometry cell count and the other one we crowd preserve the transfected T cells. So this is the table to tell you what are the parameter we are looking at and what are the acceptance criteria that CGT market really wanted. So the transfection efficiency on day one, the acceptance criteria is more than 50%. The cell U at day 10, it had to more than 1.5 times 10 to the power of 9 viable cells. Not just high cell yield, they also need to make sure that the viability of the cells are very good, which is more than 70% for the passing criteria. And tell the purity of the T cell is also very critical. For this case, we measure the CD3 plus and we need to look for more than 90% purity. So this is the result that we have seen and we compare between a frozen PBMC and also fresh PBMC. And you're able to see that after 10 days, it's actually not much difference between the frozen and the fresh PBMC. And for the transfection, because we are using PMAC GFP and PMAC GFP is very transient because it doesn't integrate it into genome. So is the slowly the transfection efficiency will weigh will weigh off. So on day one, the passing criteria is more than 50% and we have more than 50% um, as you can see here. And we also need to look for the purity purity of the CD3 plus T cells. So this is the result that we take from day one, day four, day seven, and day 10, when we do the sampling. So we also analyze the CD4 and CD8 plus ratio. And toward the day 10, we, we get the um, ratio of one to one between CD4 and CD8. So, so this is the summary of the, the white paper that we have. We actually run two runs of the frozen PBMC and three fresh PBMC that direct isolate from the fresh leukopack. pack. And the transfection efficiency of the passing ID is more than 50%. And from the frozen and fresh, we have about 60%, which is quite an encouraging one. And for the cell yield, the requirement is 1.5 times 10 to the power of nine. But as you can see on day 10, using the cocoon system, we are almost double, close to double of the acceptance criteria, which is 2.8 times 10 to the power of 9. And the cell viability is very good. We have more than 97% for both frozen and fresh PBMC. And for purity wise, we have more than 99% for the frozen and 96% for the fresh PBMC. So with that, it comes to my last slide. So, well, in a, in a cell and gene therapy process, you need to isolate, simulate expansion the cells, doing genetic modification, expand it, characterizing, and put it back to patient. So Lanza do offer um, primary cells that you can do it for process validation. And you can use the cultural media throughout the step two to step four. And Nucofactor technology is a very eff efficient, non-viral based method that uh, usually regulatory like it because there's no viral vector for consideration. And it's, it's really a proven technology with more than 10,000 publications. And of course, Cocoon, that this is a state of the art, or you can say that this is a game changers that introduced to a manufacturing facility because everything is closed and closed in a small little Cocoon system. And theoretically, 
um, you do not need to have class A. But again, depend on ro local regulation, you have to check with your NPCB or the local act whether do, do you need to have the cocoon in place into uh, class B environment, for example. But theoretically, this is the idea that people wanted to have a closed system able to run it automatically and put it in a normal clean room. And endotoxin testing is a critical um, step, which is you need to comply to the regulatory requirement because you want to make sure that the end product that you have do not have any bacteria so that when you inject back the patient, you are not harming them instead of um, helping to save their life. Um, MODA is something is a is a very important thing that you need to move into digitalization your process flow that will help you to move things faster and the last thing that lonza is offering is we are offering a uh, development and manufacturing services as well so with that i thank you for your thank you for your attention so if you have any questions just let me know or uh, Fatin, do you see any question on the chat box? For now, no. Thank no? you so much, Ian for this. I think I really enjoyed your presentation. It's really very <laughs> Am I speaking too fast? I'm not too yeah. sure, but I hope that I, I try to, because it's a very busy site and the whole manufacturing process is, you need a lot of expert in this and I can say that I'm not the one. <laughs> but I'm just trying to share with some of the few experience that I work with customers in Singapore and also in the region and hopefully I can give you some support as well. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, with that, yeah, I just wanna check uh, if anyone have questions you can post them on your chat box or you can unmute yourself and um, speak. Yeah. Okay, we have one. Good morning when oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I saw one raised hand by Wang Jing Chok. Do you have any questions that we can help with? Right, but uh, Jinwen, I have a question on the cocoon mm -hmm. system. Is it like if the cells were, are the cells were cultured in suspension? So when you do, because I, I, I heard earlier you were saying you were shaking the system. Yeah. So, um, so the system when it's closed is able to shake like a wave system. So you are actually trying to do the shaking to 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 give more media um able to go through evenly. But this usually people are using for suspension cells for the cocoon system. So, uh, but usually, if they are working with CAR T, like blood cells, they are mainly suspension cells. Mm -hmm. But if you're working, if you're thinking about adherent, this might not be something so um, suitable because of the surface area. So for mesenchymal stem cells, Lonza experience working with mesenchymal stem cells in clinical trial manufacturing processes, we usually use the cell factories. And definitely, we also try to move the um, mesenchymal stem cell into bioreactor bioreactor system. But currently, we can only do in a very small scale. I can give you an example for suspension cells for normal typical Cho cells on um, biological drugs. They are able to go up to twenty thousand liters. So in Singapore, our TWAS manufacturing site, we have at least at least three 20,000 liter bioreactors for those suspension cells that are using for CHO cells. That's how they can reduce the manufacturing cost because with the scaling up. Uh, we have a question from Wen Jing Chong. Um, oh. He's asking like how much it costs for the cocoon and the LV system. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, but I don't think that is convenient for me to share right, right here um, public, publicly because the cocoon itself is one um one device charges, but more to it is we we need we usually help to guide customers on how to translate your process into our cocoon system. So that is the service part. So if you are very interested, send me an email. I think you you may have my email yunwen.tan at lonza com, and we can schedule a more in depth technical discussion, and we'll give you the quotation accordingly. But definitely it's not cheap, right? Yeah. 
because the chemo treatment itself is really more than 300,000 US dollars. But definitely this is trying to reduce that cost into more workable and more uh, accept ac acceptable level. So when I talked to the Singapore hospitals um, stem cell group, they were telling me that all these are not feasible. What we look for, let's say, uh, let's say a chemotherapy or a knee knee operation using to do the knee cap replacement, there is always a ten thousand US dollar, ten thousand Singapore dollars. So if we are looking for CAR T treatment or the future cell and gene therapy treatment, what we are aiming for is between ten thousand per treatment. So that is more. Um, able to benefit most of the public so we are able to cure more patients and also the insurance company will be able to do the coverage for others within the very acceptable range so if you're interested do email me and the lv wise because the lv is a um, again um I, I think usually people will not buy lv straight away so usually the typical workflow is I will be working on a smaller scale in call and X machine. So we, I, I will play with 1 million or 5 million or 10 million of cells and everything when it's okay, I will then scale out to 1 billion cells. So the, the LV machine is quite competitive, I would say, compared to the market or probably uh, cheaper on the available uh, equipment on the GMP area. But definitely we can we can discuss on this but because after we launched the lv unit two years ago we really have a lot of interest in the market that um, work between the non-viral based method which is the lv connected to the cocoon and we do it manufacturing in-house and also work with the customers at their clinical trial site good question any more yeah, do, we, do we have any more questions But this is this is a very interesting area and we are all inside now. So I believe that Malaysia landscape in CGT is also moving very fast. So the regulation keep changing. So do keep updated on yourself with the regulation need. And from the Lonza perspective, it might be slightly different with yours. So for example, can I have the cocoon inside my class C room? Or should I have my cocoon in my, in my class B room? So there, there is something that we have to work with the local regulation. But when the time is matured enough, we are able to have a discussion with you and the local regulator. Okay. I think we don't have any, we don't have any more questions, Nguyen. And okay. uh, I, I would just like to say thank you for today. Um, we really appreciate your time on uh, sharing this um, topic. I mean, I, I myself, I learn a lot. <laughs> much clearer picture and uh, the flow of the uh, cell and gene therapy as well and uh, i would like to also thank everyone for joining us today and uh, we welcome any feedback from you so we um we have leave a feed, feed, uh, feedback form uh, in the chat box if you uh, would um, we appreciate if you could fill that and then we hope that we could you know improve for our future webinar or we could just look into what are the topics that you are interested to know it then probably we can serve that for you so uh yunwen and everyone uh, thank you so much and uh have a wonderful day ahead and stay safe practice strict sop <laughs> yes thank you Yunwen. Thank, thank you bye-bye